So just to begin a little bit, I would like to share kind of why we're doing this. So why is research so important as a student, as someone hoping to go into ministry, why is it important to be able to write a research paper or to use um, secondary sources, primary sources, tertiary sources, all of these, this information can seem kind of lofty and removed from what are often our immediate ministry focuses. Um, but actually, I think it's really helpful. And, uh, you know, as a minister, as someone who will be teaching or preaching, counseling, um, it's important not only to know things, you know, like things that you find from your textbooks, from your lectures, from your readings, but also to be able to explore new subjects and then to articulate them in a way that is your own that you can then apply to your own context. So in, in a broad sense, that's what you're doing in research is you're understanding what have people said about this passage of scripture or this theological doctrine or this historical time period or maybe a particular ethical concern or apologetic concern. And you're taking those thoughts and you're compiling them together, presenting an argument and then articulating it in a way that will not only be um, helpful for you to express your own thoughts, but then also to communicate that in a way that's helpful to others as well. Um, and let's be honest, there's another reason why you want to do this too. In many of your classes, you're going to have to write a research paper. And I'm sure that for many of you, the question comes into your mind, how am I supposed to write a research paper as a distance student? I can't go to a library. Maybe you're working full time. Um, how am I actually going to do this to write a thorough research paper? Or, um, you know, and this could apply to a variety of contexts, a micro theme paper, a book review, you know, anything like that. Um, but as a distance student, this can be very difficult. Well, rest assured, um, at Southern, we believe that the online program needs to be flexible for students who are actively involved in ministry, as well as thorough in the research ability that you can do. So that's really what we want to help you with. Um, so just to give some uh, guidance or so, some focus in how we're going to explore this, there are two classes that are currently being offered. Dr. Hamilton's Old Testament II class, as well as Dr. Timothy Paul Jones's History of the Bible class. Um, and both of these require papers. And both of these, the deadlines are coming up pretty soon. And we can imagine that maybe some of you in this webinar right now are still trying to figure out what you're going to write on, or you're still kind of thinking about that process. Well, we want to be helpful for you. So I'm going to explore um, first, I'm going to give an introduction to a helpful web page that our office has put together uh, for distance students specifically, and then I'm going to explore what um, doing research for a paper like Dr. Hamilton's Old Testament 2 class would look like, and then Tyler will follow up with um, the same sort of process with Dr. Timothy Paul Jones' History of the Bible class. So without further ado, I'll share my screen. And you'll be able to see, um, you should be able to see a new website that has just been released. And uh, can you all see this now? So this is online.sbts.edu. This is your hub for online resources as a distance student. This is something that our office has actually put together for you um, just to help you in this. So now I just wanna give you a little bit of overview. Um, you'll see I'm here on the main page and immediately you'll see this button here about resources for online students. And we'll look at that in, in just a moment. Um, we also have events such as the one that you're attending as well as you can look at past events. Um, just something, uh, information about our staff and our office, a way to contact us if you have questions or need any help. Um, there's some featured resources, uh, you know, helpful tips and tricks that will help you to do well in your online classes, um, as well as just some other important information. Uh, lectures that we found to be particularly inspiring or helpful for students. Um, and you, I just encourage you to peruse this site and see how it might be helpful to you as an online student. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this resources tab. And now you'll see we have 
several different resources here, and I would encourage you to look at these because they already have information that will be very helpful for you. Um, we did a webinar on biblical languages just a few months ago, um, and other things like that will be really uh, helpful. So I encourage you to check these out after this webinar. Um, now, I'm going to spend some time focusing on the research resources, and then after this, Tyler will come and talk about writing resources uh, when I'm finished um, looking at Dr. Hamilton's class. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on research resources here. And actually, before that, I'm just going to give an idea and show you the assignment that I'm going to be looking at. So if you can see here, this is Dr. Hamilton's syllabus, and this is the paper that students are required to write. So it's an exegetical paper on a particular biblical book, um, and where you're identifying the main point of the passage in a thesis statement, uh, as well as students may also write a paper discussing a theme within a biblical book. Um, and there's some other information. Now, as far as research, some things that are important to keep in mind. It asks that you consult at least 10 secondary sources. Um, and there's an encouragement that the more the better uh, for 15 sources would be amazing. Um, and some other stipulations on the type of resources that are being, uh, that, that are encouraged by this assignment. So for instance, commentaries, encyclopedias, dictionaries, journal articles, and books pertaining to your passage. And that's monographs are another way of expressing that same idea of a particular book about a particular passage or biblical book. All right, so now as I think about this paper, um, I was just reading the Bible and you know my time with the Lord and I came across something that I thought was interesting. When I looked at um, the minor prophets in particular, in Joel and in or in Joel and in Jonah, I noticed the same uh, statement that was said that um, came from Exodus 34: uh, "A God gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relenting from disaster." So we see almost the same exact thing here in Joel, um, and that was intriguing to me. So I thought about exploring that, and really my question is: How is each text here? using Exodus 34, 6, and in particular, what is the relationship of these texts to one another? Why is it that both of them would quote this verse um, in a similar context? They're both minor prophets, uh, and so that, that's my question, is how is how are these two passages using um, Exodus here? And now that's just a general research question that's going to give me some help as I try to focus um, in what I'm going to look at. And so now I'm going to go to this researches tab. <clears throat> and you'll see we have the library website here that we can go to, research guides, as well as distant student services. And um, I'm just going to click on research guides here, because you'll see now I'm on the library website page. And on the library website, we have all of these guides, 21 guides that will help students to find good quality resources. So for instance, for an Old Testament paper, we have different categories, Old Testament exegesis, Old Testament resource guide, textual criticism, and theology. So the two that would be particularly helpful in this instance is Old Testament exegesis and the resource guide. Um, so I'm actually going to click on that here. And you'll see I have this research guide up, and it has some really helpful information about Hebrew Bible texts that are used, um, lexicons, grammars, sources for textual criticism, uh, some explanations, as well as Bible dictionaries and commentaries. Now, when you're writing, um, you know, one of the things that I encourage you to think about is the difference between primary, secondary, and tertiary sources. Primary sources, uh, when, we, when it comes to the Bible, that would be the, the text that you're examining. Uh, if you were doing a theology paper, that may be what a particular theologian has said. If you're doing a church history paper, that may be, you know, John Calvin's writings. Um, but those would be primary sources. And then secondary sources would be those texts that are commenting on what the primary source says. 
tertiary sources would be one step further. So it's those sources that compile what others have said about this particular topic or text. So one of the things that I tend to do is I focus heavily on the primary source. I want to examine the scripture. I want to see what it's saying, get my ideas about what, how are these two texts working together? And then I want to look at secondary and tertiary sources. So a great place to start are Bible dictionaries. So I'm just going, I have this tab open here. So this is the Bible dictionaries. And we have a few dictionaries that are very helpful. And even just these first two dictionaries are great places to start. So again, I'm looking at Joel and Jonah and how they're using Exodus 34, 6. So I'm just going to click on this IVP dictionary of the Old Testament. This takes us to the library website. And the first thing that I see is the dictionary on the prophets come up, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And you'll notice that I can actually read the book online right here from the website. So even right here from the library page. So even if you're halfway across the world or you know, you're in ministry somewhere, um, you can access these books just like you would be able to if you went to the library. So I'll go to J and we see Joel and Jonah, perfect. Okay, so actually, let's see. So I'm going to, let's hang on, I'm gonna go back one second. Let me see here. All right, bear with me for one moment. For some reason, this isn't. Oh, okay, there we go. So um, so in this instance, it I think the issue, this is one thing to keep in mind. So it actually, in this instance, the book is being in use. And this is something that uh, is probably my fault because I think I have it open on another computer. Um, but th this shouldn't be an issue for you. So actually what you can do, I'll just explain it for you without taking any more time. You can go to this page here and you can click on the book and it will take you to that page. So you'll be able to see the information, you'll be able to see everything that you need, um, as well as in a dictionary like this, there will be information at the end that would have the bibliography, um, which that scholar has chosen as key resources for the book of Joel, the book of Jonah, and you can look at those texts that will help you to see other resources. Um, so without dwelling too much on that, I'm going to look at another one here. So for instance, let's say, or you know, maybe in our instance, if I couldn't access this IVP dictionary, or if I wanted to find another one, well, I could click on the Anchor Yale Bible Dictionary. However, this Anchor Yale Bible Dictionary does not have in a online edition. So what we would want to do there is we would actually need to use distant services or distant services. So I'm going to go back to online.sbts.edu. Right here. And if I go back to that same res uh, research resources and click on distant student services, you'll see that I can actually request a book or chapter um, of that book. So basically you can just go to this tab, click on that, and you can actually request the whole article on Joel and Jonah or whatever topic you may need and the librarian will scan those and send them to you. You can also ask that books be mailed to you if you're within the, um, within the United States. 
Um, there may be, it may be continental United States, but you're able to ask those books to be mailed to you. And, uh, and, and that's a really helpful way as well. If you have questions as a distance student, you can always email Emily Smith because she is the coordinator that helps to make sure that our distance students can get the resources they need. Now, I'm gonna go back um, and also look at commentaries because commentaries is another thing that are really important when you're examining the Old Testament. So here on this page, we have several good quality commentaries that will deal with the text in a very substantial way. So Hermeneia, the New International Commentary on the Old Testament, these are all really good commentaries that can be helpful for you as you're examining the text. So you can click on these, you can look at the library website, and either you can access them digitally or you can request for, you know, um, Let's say Joel 2, you can have that um, scanned and then emailed to you. That would be really helpful for a paper like this. But if I would go back um, and actually go to the Old Testament resource guide, uh, we see what was also in the syllabus, which are academic journals. So an academic journal is a journal article that's peer-reviewed. It's an academic source that can speak about a different passage or topic within the Old Testament. So we have a couple different examples here, biblical studies, evangelical journal articles, linguistic studies, ancient Near Eastern journal articles. And this is helpful to see what are some quality journal articles that people are referring to. Um, and this is just a good idea to see when you actually find your journal articles, what are good quality sources. So I see all of these and I can click on these here, but this is actually going to take me to the journal article itself. And I actually want to be able to search for all journal articles. So I'm going to go back to online.sbts.edu and I'm just going to go to the research or to the library website directly. And then I'll click on databases because this is going to help me find the most journal articles. And I'll click on databases A to Z. And the very first one, it's super easy for you, is just to click on academic search complete. This will give us some ability to search many different journal articles. And so what I'm going to search here, just very simply, because I have two texts that in particular are working together, Joel and Jonah. And this and makes sure that both what I'm searching, when I'm searching for Joel and when I'm searching for Jonah, only those things that contain both of those together are going to pop up. If you wanted to um, modify those fields, you can change that. If you wanted to specify an author or a um, biblical text in particular or subject terms, you can do all of that here. Um, and so that would be very helpful to do as well. So I'm just going to search this and you'll see not too many resources, 58 resources. But if I wanted to pare that down just a little bit, I could do that by selecting full text. Now that's only going to show me the resources that actually include PDFs to the article or direct references to um, the sources that I need. Now we see that the sources are from 1978 to 2020. Okay, that's not too bad. If I wanted to specify that more, I could go to maybe 1990. That would limit it down a little bit more. Um, but now I can look through and see what sort of options we have. And as I'm looking, you'll notice that some of these are book reviews. Well, that wouldn't really help me too much. Um, but as I keep looking through these passages, you see some of these are not related at all. That's just part of the fun of looking for journal articles. But I see one article here, Jonah read intertextually. Well, that's perfect for what I'm looking for. That's exactly what I want. So I can go ahead and click on that. And now this will take me to a page that gives me some information about it. Uh, it tells me the source journal of biblical literature and i would just remind you that this um, actually was on that uh, library resource um, one of the recommended journal articles that you can use um, <clears throat> and so now i can do two things here that are really important i can go ahead and email this to myself so i can put in my email and then if i select citation then i can choose 
for the Chicago 17th edition notes and bibliography to be sent to me in my email. So not only is it going to send me the PDF of that article, but it will also send me the citation style that I need. And I'm not going to do that right now, but that's just something that's really important for you to do. Um, and now I'll just go ahead and access this as a PDF. So now I'm able to look at it on print. I'm able to see it with page numbers and everything. And most importantly, I'm able to see the other sources that this scholar is referencing that are helpful to this topic. So I might look at the footnotes. I might look through what are the major headings of this paper. Um, and you, you can see just some of the sources that are available might be very promising for future research on this topic. So, and again, I would encourage you, we have those Bible dictionaries, we have the commentaries, and then we have these journal articles that can really give you a good start to actually explore these topics. You could do something different. You could search for Jonah and Exodus. You could search for intertextuality in the minor prophets. You could um, change up some of the ways that you look for these things. You could look at different dictionary articles. You could look at the footnotes there. Um, but this will be a really good way to get started in a project and actually to make some headway in getting good quality sources for your research. Um, and so, yeah, that's just uh, all I wanted to share with you as far as for Dr. Hamilton's class. And now Tyler is actually going to share a little, I'll stop sharing my screen. And then Tyler is going to share um, about uh, Dr. Timothy Paul Jones uh, class on history of the Bible. Awesome, thanks, John. Uh, as John stops sharing his screen, I can go ahead and give a quick introduction to myself. I'm currently a master and divinity student uh, studying Christian ministry. Um, I've been working with online learning for about seven, seven to eight months now. And so I've greatly enjoyed my time here. Um, so while I pull up um, my screen, um, as John said, I will be uh, discussing uh, how to do research for a paper like History of the Bible. Um, so John detailed more or less the intricacies of how you would research an exegetical paper or a theology paper. Um, so now I'm going to walk through a paper from that you might um, do more for a, a church history class or an apologetics or an ethics paper. And so first off, we'll start off with the syllabus as John um, detailed with the Dr. Hamilton paper. Um, your best bet is going to start off with the syllabus. And so here for this course, we have uh, there's two assignments for this. Uh, paper. There's a rough draft and a final draft. And so for both, um, the, the main goal of the paper is that students are to write a thoroughly researched response to one very specific claim made in Bart Ehrman's Misquoting Jesus. Um, uh, for the rough draft, you have to cite no, no fewer than five scholarly sources. And, and for the final draft, you have to cite no fewer than 10 scholarly sources. So with this paper, unlike the one for Dr. Hamilton's, this paper, you have a very specific prompt that you have to work through. And so from that, we have a great start to our research. Um, as I move my bar out of the way. So the first step, as John mentioned, is we'll go to the, the library website. Again, you can uh, access that through the online.sbts.edu page. And so from here, um, Assuming that you have the book, what you can do um, is just search through your books. And so if you wanted to search for misquoting Jesus, like I have, you'll come up and if you need the book um, to see if it's an ebook, you can. Um, unfortunately, this book is only through our hard, co hard copy format. And so um, one option for books that you have is to uh, have scans of chapters uh, sent to you. And so one way to look for those just to when you come up to the library um, uh, page for each book, you look in the contents. And so from here, you should have the table of contents. And so for some books um, within the library system, there is no contents here. And so you're left with the, the question of what's actually in this book? Is this book going to be helpful and useful for my research? Um, and so one great way that you can um, figure out 
whether or not the content is useful for your research. Because if you need to do research, deep research into a subject uh, or to a very specific claim, reading widely is not necessarily going to be helpful to you. You need to be able to dig deep into your specific claim. And so one thing you can do is you can copy the ISBN number here at the bottom. Uh, the ISBN number is just the very unique um, number given to each book. Um, and so if you search it, it will pull up misquoting Jesus. And so if you go into Google Books, you can view preview. And then from here, you can go down to the table of contents. And so from here, um, for a book that you don't know the contents for, you can search individually and figure out, is this chapter by this specific author helpful to my research? And if it is, then you can make that request in Distant Student Services to Emily Smith, and she and her team will get that content sent to you. And so from here, um, we'll go ahead and use the research guides. Like John said, um, the research guides at our disposal here are incredible. They're um, in depth and wide ranging from almost every single course that you may need here at Southern or Boyce. And so for th this specific paper, we would go to the New Testament Studies um, Research Guide. And from here, there are dozens of pages with which you can um, further your research. But for this specific paper, Bart Ehrman deals with the question of historical Jesus. Is Jesus um, in the Bible that we have truly the Jesus that was in the original writings? And so you would go to this uh, historical Jesus page and you have um, about two dozen books at your disposal to work through and to read. Now, you shouldn't read every single book on this page. Um, part of the, the learning how to research is learning what's the best book to research. And so as you work through these books, um, you find this book may not be the best for my research topic. And so kind of put it to the side. But if you think this book, A Marginal Jew by John P. Meyer, this seems interesting. This seems like exactly what I need. You can open it up. You have the ebook. And as John said, um, you can download the PDF. You can send it to yourself. You can cite it. You can do all those things that John described earlier. And so um, the same process that John described for the exegetical paper is the exact same one for a history or apologetics or ethics. Um, the content of your paper will change, the manner in which, the depth in which you go into your research potentially, um, but the process is the same. And so from here, what we'll do is, um, as John did before, we'll go into databases. And if there's a very specific claim of textual criticism that you're trying to tackle within um, Airman's claims, you would just go through the same uh, database searching that uh, John did. And so if you wanted to deal specifically with Bart Ehrman, um, you would search textual criticism and Bart Ehrman. And so from here, you would get a whole host of um, things. And so you have things like academic journals, um, things in which John discussed, they're peer reviewed, they're scholarly, um, they are perfect for papers. Not all of them are written well and clean in the sense of they're easy to understand, um, but they are helpful for research. Then you have things like periodicals, magazines, papers, things that happen in the popular press that are nice kind of background information. Sometimes if you're trying to figure out why is Bart Ehrman so popular? Why was this book so influential in the time? And then you have book reviews. Book reviews are great for um, kind of background research. Um, they can help you understand more about um, as you walk into a book or walk into a research subject, um, what's that minefield that you're potentially going to find yourself in as you become accustomed to the research. And so um, some of the options for when you search in databases here, you have um, different source types. So if you're only trying to look for academic journals, um, then you should refine your research to just academic journals. Um, considering uh, that uh, 
Ehrman is a recent author and within the past 25 years, um, this publication date is not gonna be as much of an issue. But if you're handling a topic like uh, Joel and Jonah, this is generally going to be very key is like trying to figure out what's the most modern scholarship that's talking about the intersection of Joel and Jonah. And so the sweet spot is probably 15 to 20 years within like one generation of what is modern scholarship saying about a topic. And so this is, all, you have a, a wealth of knowledge and opportunities through these databases that um, we really can't say enough the opportunities that our library system has afforded us. And so you have all of this research topic or all this research information. You've gone through all of these books, all of these sources, all of these databases, what's next? And so as you're continuing to do research, the next step should be preparing the writing. And so we're here on online.svts.edu slash resources. John had went through research resources. Now the next step from the research is then applying it to the writing. And so what you'll wanna do is click on writing resources. And we have three options of resources available to us. Um, all three are through the writing center here at, at Southern. Um, we have templates and guides, which we'll get to in a second. Um, we have, then we have these two here on the side, uh, submitting a paper and scheduling, scheduling an appointment. For both of these, um, our dedicated staff at the Writing Center, um, they spend time and energy reviewing papers, working with you students to ensure that your writing is the best that it can possibly possibly be. Um, I would highly encourage you to take these opportunities to ensure that as you're going through your studies, as you're reading all this research, that your writing um, improves and continues to be, improve to the best that it could possibly be. There are, are also other articles and videos that we'll, we will continue to expand upon in the growing months as we add more content to this page. Um, the Tips for Book Reviews is an incredible resource. I highly encourage you to check that out later. But first, we'll, but lastly, we'll go here to this templates and guides. Um, this will be one of your most frequented pages as you study here at Southern and Boyce. Um, these are all things that the Writing Center has put together for students' ease of uh, use and um, less stress. Uh, we have the research paper template here. Uh, we'll get into that at the very end. But first, I want to point out two things. One, the SBTS Quick Guide, uh, the Citation Quick Guide. This is a condensed version of the manual of style, which we'll get into in a second. Um, if you have a question as you're doing your research, I have this book, I have this article, what exactly do I do with it? Um, how do I put it into my bibliography? How do I make it into a footnote? This will be your um, saving grace. Um, you can, they've condensed all of the different options with which you have um, sources available to you um, and they've made them easy to understand and easy to apply. Um, if you, you have questions that aren't on here or about things that aren't on here, the next place to go will be the manual of style. Um, this is the backbone of this institution's writing and publishing. Um, everything in here will get you through your time here, whether it's at Boyce or at Southern. Um, it's far more in depth than we can uh, go through today, um, but this will be how you write your papers. This would be how you write your book reviews for all of your classes, um, whether it's at the undergraduate, graduate, or postgraduate level. Um, and so the very end, we have this research paper template. This is, this is where you will be kind of putting um, your, your final research. And so let's see if I can pull up my, uh, template, open it up real quick. Um, we will be getting to questions in a second. Um, so if you have questions as we've gone through this, go ahead and put them in the Q&A uh, or the chat, either one, and then we'll be sure to answer that. 
um, once we're finished with this, Microsoft Word is deciding to be um, very slow right now. And so, wonderful. Um, okay. Can you see my screen? Is this popping up? Cool. So this is the template. Um, this will be kind of, you would want to save this template to your computer and use it every time. Um, you'd want to save as, as soon as you open this document and create a new version of it. Um, so what I'm trying to do right real quick is pull up the comments. Um, where are they? Show comments. So the Writing Center has put together this template and it is incredible in that they have figured out a way to make these comments to tell you what exactly needs to be, how it needs to be formatted. Um, but the, be the plus, the, the benefit of it is, this is basically just a plug and place um, template. So if my research paper title is uh, Bart Ehrman's um, uh, Textual Criticism of uh, John Four, and then you just put in your, uh, your title, and then from here, once soon as you finish a, finish a section, you just delete that comment. And so, um, as you go through, there you'll notice that there's a very specific style in which the school has decided to uh, format their papers. And so, it can be very time consuming, very stressful if you don't have a template up in front of you that you're working from. And so, this will be. Um, your uh, best bet on how to ensure that your papers are done well and they don't lose points for citations and formatting. Um, again, this is on the resources page here, the Writing Center, um, which you can find back on the uh, online.sbts.edu. And so, We've got some resources here for you guys to make your lives easier, to ensure that you can find everything on one spot without having to jump around to different websites.